The sun was shining bright on that very hot summer day. Butterflies came out of their cocoons to fly up, up, up and away. They were meant to flutter and to dance and to play with all the other butterflies in a butterfly-like way. Every year, after the springtime showers, they gathered around the rainbow of colorful flowers. Their wings would flit too and then fro in a ballet of beauty like something you'd want to know. But for Billy the butterfly, it was simply not that simple, even though he was cuter than a dimple. He could neither come out of his cocoon nor play with his peers. There was nothing wrong with his feet, his eyes, nor his ears. It's just that he would rather stay inside in the warmth of his cocoon and never come out, not even on that sunshiny afternoon. You see, Billy was so very, very shy. He didn't really understand why, but he wouldn't come out. And so he couldn't fly. So for Billy, there would be no ring around the pedals or joining in the races and winning any medals. He wasn't going to flitter nor flutter about. He wasn't going to open those wings on that sunny day and burst out. Instead, he remained dingling and dangling on that old oak tree, like some kind of possum or bat, or better yet, a chimpanzee. Until one day, dark, windy rain clouds moved in with fright. The sun, waiting for Billy, tried to hold them back with all its might. That wise old flaming burst of sunlight held on and on and on so very tight. Finally, to his dismay, the sun lost the fight. Worse even yet, by then it was night. The wind blew a strong and hard gust of air, rocking his cocoon and giving Billy quite a scare. The wind pushed on his cocoon, sending it swirl dangling, and then with a twist in midair, thrust it twirl tangling. All of a sudden, there was a big crack in the sky. It scared poor Billy and even made him cry. That big bolt of thunder made a very loud sound, startling Billy and sending him in his cocoon crashing to the ground. The storm had lasted through the night, but when the morning had finally come, lucky for Billy, it brought with it the warmth of the sun. His poor little cocoon had some cracks and a small tear, and he landed in the land of somewhere. Billy was neither here nor there. He could be anywhere, but really, where? The fall gave poor Billy a sore tush and a little crick in the back. Nevertheless, he sat up and popped his eyes through a crack. He was curious to see what there was to see. But all he could see was a lazy little bee sleeping under an umbrella tree. Some of the other bees thought she was not funny, napping when she should be helping get the honey. Next, he poked out his little legs to get on Snail Trail. He trotted along and bumped into who else but Shelly the Snail. She was quite a sight for his sore eyes. With her big, huge eyeballs the color of blue skies, her bright red hair and nose quite freckled, Shelly's shell was covered with spectacular colors all speckled. She didn't look anything like the other snails around who crawled cautiously in their brown shells close to the ground. What kind of snail are you? She asked Billy with a huge smile. Billy just giggled and walked beside Shelly for a while. Shelly and Billy became friends right away on what was now an even brighter sunshining day. As they journeyed together along the trail, Shelley told Billy she wished she wasn't a snail. They looked up to the wide open sky and watched the butterflies float, flutter, and fly. Shelley dreamed that she would grow wings and soar up above, like a beautiful butterfly or white-winged dove. She thought she could be so much happier without a big shell, 
so heavy to carry around and which sometimes had a funny smell. But Billy couldn't imagine anything more amazing than having a shell like hers, a place to keep safe from the dangers of rain, wind, or those bug-eating birds. What a perfect life it would be, a mobile house to travel around the earth or to the bottom of the sea. Even if there was a thunderclap like from a storm, he would stay in his home where it's always dry and warm. Oh, the places he would go and the things he would learn and then know. I would never come out, Billy wanted to scream in a loud shout, but he couldn't. So therefore he wouldn't. And he didn't because Billy was so very, very shy. Everything seemed just fine until he looked up to the sky and he saw the most scariest of a scary sight. The rain clouds were back for another fight. Shelley was still daydreaming of the wings that would help her escape when she noticed Billy had begun to quiver and then to quake. She suggested since the clouds were moving over the sun, that they should go inside for a cup of tea and a hot bun. Oh, yes, 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 I most certainly would, he replied. I mean, if I most certainly could, he nearly cried. Shelley laughed a hearty lot. I like Billy, she thought. Since it was going to rain and they couldn't roam, together they headed into Shelley's home. Billy was delighted by this world he had never seen. Her shell was most certainly the best place he had ever been. Shelley had collected everything from magical shells to golden rings. Hers was a colorful world filled with all kinds of colorful things. Knick-knacks were stacked on every shelf, everywhere. Hobbies at different stages were over here and over there. Everything from paint by numbers of butterflies to jigsaw puzzles of the sunrise. Shelley had a vivid mind filled with imaginations from which she crafted up all sorts of creations. Shelley believed that poor Billy didn't much like to talk. He was so shy he had barely uttered a word along their long walk. But when he finally spoke... There was no stopping him. Shelley just stood there and listened with a sweet grin. Billy went on and on about the amazing world she had in her shell. He chatted and chattered about how her life was so very, very swell. Shelley realized that she had a wonderful life to share. It was Billy, her newfound friend, who made her care. She put the kettle on for some tea, then said, I feel so very happy to be me, and that is because of you, Billy. You're a special friend because you made me see. The kettle blew a warning whistle with its spout. Billy sat at the table for tea, but as he did, his wings sprung out. Oh, my goodness, he thought. Oh, my dear. Look at what happened here. He quickly tried to push his wings back into his cocoon, all the while bumping and jumping around the room, sweeping things off the shelves and onto the floor. And when he leaped to catch them, the broom fell knocking at the door. Despite all his efforts, Billy only made things a lot worse. And when finally Shelley noticed, her lips went into a purse. Will you stop that wiggling around and sit down? she said with a curious frown. Billy stopped, but as he released his hands from his side, his wings broke out and opened up real wide. They filled up almost all the space around. Shelley was so surprised she could hardly utter a sound. Finally, she did speak, and when she spoke, I can tell you, lads, it was no joke. You have wings! You're a butterfly! You should be up in the sky! But there was nowhere in the world Billy would rather be than in the colorful, bright world of Shelley. You were given wings! You must fly! 
You must try your very best even though you're shy. I know you mean well, Billy answered. But you have no worries. You carry a shell. Why, I could bump into a bee or worse yet smash into a tree. Everyone would be looking at me and I would feel so very silly. Oh, my dear Billy, how can you not see? Your wings are a gift from the angels above, Shelley said with a great deal of love. Finally, she convinced Billy to give it his very best shot, even though flying was a sport he'd rather not. But the sun knew that Billy was a butterfly and that he should join him in the sky. He shined harder than before and even more bright. All the clouds left the sky right out of sight. Shelley's shell began to fill with the warm light, giving Billy the urge to soar into flight. Problem was, his wings had grown larger than the door. Billy couldn't possibly get through it anymore. No matter how many times he tried, his wings were much, much too wide. After they had tried this, then they tried that. They got so tired they decided to sit, and that is when they sat. But Shelley refused to just sit around. She wanted to see Billy in the sky, not on the ground. Roll up your wings, she told Billy, and lie on the floor. I can put you back in your cocoon, then you'll fit out the door. At last, with a big huff and a bigger puff, she pushed him outside. They both laughed so hard they nearly cried. Now, Billy, she said, open up your wings real wide. This would take all the strength that he had inside. But finally, he released the hold on his wings. All the birds in the trees began to sing. For all her travels to all the places she had been, more beautiful wings she had never seen. With great pride, Shelley watched Billy soar into flight. For the first time ever in his life, he felt everything was just right. He fluttered as high as a tree. Billy thought, what a wonderful feeling to be free. He smelled the wonderful fragrance from all the flowers and plants, while the other butterflies joined Billy in a happy dance. After this day, Shelley continued her travels around the globe with a new attitude that made her proud of her abode. She stopped wishing to be something she was not and began to be happy with her most colorful lot. And his friend Shelley... Billy had not forgot. He would always love his buddy more than a lot. So he would visit her every day, and they would chat and laugh over tea before he'd fly away. Billy would take her to the top of a mountain so high, so she would know how it felt to fly. Shelley would slide him down a mountain to ski. And she even once brought him to the bottom of the sea. Shelley was happy to be a snail, traveling slowly along her trail. And Billy was happy to be a butterfly because he was no longer shy.